All right, gang. Uh, moving on to Charlie Purses. He's an American philosopher, the first American, I think, that we studied this semester. Um, interesting guy. It's, it's really interesting to read about his life. He, uh, I won't spend too much time on it, but you know, he was born a hotshot. He was born to the head of the math department at Harvard. He himself graduated Harvard, I think, when he was 15. Uh, he was a brilliant mathematician. Everybody knew that he was going to take over the math department at Harvard, but then his father got into a fight with the president of Harvard, and the president of Harvard made sure that not only would Charlie not work at Harvard, he made sure that Charlie would not work anywhere. Uh, during the, uh, what the heck war was it? Well, during some war, um, Purse and his family were pacifists and weren't going to fight. And so as punishment, they sent him down to Louisiana to map the coastline. And you can just imagine the coastline of Louisiana. And you can imagine what a punishment it was. It was supposed to take, oh, I don't know, a year, probably something like that. And while he was down there, he developed some system of, I don't know, measuring the locations of the stars relative to the points on land, and was able to map the whole coastline of Louisiana in about a week. Um, there's an author named Walker Percy who wrote The Second Sack, or not The Second Sack, The Second Coming, and uh, The Movie Goer, and a lot of famous books. He was a Pulitzer Prize winning author. He had given a speech once where he said, you may not have heard of Charles Sanders Purse, but you will. He, of course, was wrong, because most people still have not heard of Charles Sanders Purse, but I'll bet you've heard of some of his students. His students were William James, John Dewey, uh, Boole, the Boolean operator guy, right, and is or. Um, Turing, Alan Turing, if you read the Searle article, you know about that, Turing machine guy. Uh, who else? Josiah Royce. There's a lot of, maybe Royce isn't that famous, but John Dewey, William James, these guys are famous. Uh, Venn, right? Venn diagram guy. Uh, Peirce helped him develop those. Peirce was always into, he figured we were a visual species and so we can encapsulate lots of information visually that we can't do just written down. Anyway, I guess a lot of this is beside the point, but he's just sort of an interesting guy. Um, ended up homeless in New York City. He had built a farm in Milford, Pennsylvania. And if any of you see like the little picture of me on my emails or whatever, that's me standing in front of Peirce's farm. Uh, called Orisby. We should all go there sometime. It's in the middle of nowhere in Milford, Pennsylvania. It's pretty cool. Anyway, so old Charlie Purse in this article, this was, an, these are, this was a series of articles actually originally written for, I think it was Popular Science. And at the time, he was the only person allowed to write for that magazine on the topic of logic. So that kind of gives you an idea of how well respected he was, even though he had a hard time getting a job. A lot of his lectureships were done by William James, who was very famous and very rich and very blah, blah, blah. And William James had a lot of pull, and he would, he would get colleges to pay Purse to come speak for a week or so. And Purse would always do something horrible to piss everybody off. Like uh, he was supposed to give a talk to the philosophy department on topics of vital importance. And the idea was he could just talk about whatever he wanted. And his first line was, on topics of vital importance, philosophy is entirely out of place. Pissed off everybody in the philosophy department, right? Because it's a super important uh, job they're doing in philosophy. And Purse's point is, well, what he ended up saying in that speech was, you know, nature has equipped us with instinct for when things go really bad. And we shouldn't be spending a lot of time philosophizing and rationalizing on topics of vital importance, on matters of life and death, you know? Anyway. Uh, great, great thing. He wrote another article. I'll tell you about this in a minute. It's good stuff. But uh, he wrote an, another article called "Philosophy and the Conduct of Life." The first line is, "Your study of philosophy should have nothing to do with how you conduct your life." Don't you just love this guy already? Um, his point there being, uh, your life matters to you. When you're studying something and trying to learn the truth of it, you can't be concerned that you'll get the right result. You've got to be able to study it objectively. And when it comes to matters about your own life, you just can't do that because you care about your life. And so on uh, philosophy and the conduct of life, your study of philosophy should have nothing to do with how you conduct your life because then, like Descartes, a person would say, you'll never be satisfied until you're able to say all the things I believe are hereby true. I'm going to leave it at that for now. I'll come back and give you the real lecture on uh, Purse's um, fixation of belief uh, in the next video.